Today I'm sharing 11 tips on how to make your videos look more professional. Whether you're aiming to create a slick promotional video for your brand or product, or you're just aiming to film a classic sit down YouTube video, maybe even a camera review video. Either way, practicing these 11 essential ways to make your videos look more professional is beneficial to every video you create, even if the video is meant to be casual. Understanding and utilizing these techniques will also push you to level up your video production skills. So pay close attention to be sure you are implementing each of these these tips in your video production workflow and then carefully consider which areas might have room for a little bit of improvement. In this video we will touch on pre-production, setting up the shot, camera settings, b-roll, audio, color grading, and some professional finishing touches that you can add in editing. This video is sponsored by Storyblocks which is a fantastic resource for making a video look more professional while cutting down on production time in the process and I will tell you more about Storyblocks in just a bit. Hello my friends, I'm Alicia and this is AMA TV where I help you level up your video production and vlogging skills. And if this is your goal in 2020 or beyond, then I hope you pursue that interest by subscribing to the channel. Also hit that notification bell to receive updates when I create fresh video production tutorials and gear reviews for you. And now here are 11 ways to make your videos look more professional. Number one, plan and script your video. The most important thing you can do to make a super professional video is to plan it out well. Know exactly what message you need to convey and exactly what action you want your audience to take after watching your video. Many new content creators are super nervous to sit down and talk to the camera because they feel like they need to talk off the top of their head once the camera's rolling. And a freestyle video like that certainly has its place, especially on YouTube, it's effective if you're telling a story or maybe delivering a message from the heart, but overall it's not the most professional way to share your message. And worst of all, we all know that if a message in a video isn't conveyed clearly and quickly, then we tend to click away. So writing out a script will help you to structure and organize your thoughts. It will allow you to review the big picture and make alterations on paper before you ever hit record. That way, once you do hit record, you can share your thoughts in the most succinct and engaging manner possible. You can certainly write and deliver a script verbatim especially for a short video, either by memorizing the lines and working in chunks or using a teleprompter as your guide, or you could just bullet point the ideas you want to convey and go from there. I will often write out a detailed script and then go completely off the cuff when I'm delivering certain parts of it. However, if I didn't take the time to write the script, I don't think my thoughts would be nearly as organized. It's kind of like writing the script is the exercise before I do the talking. That's just how it works for me. I definitely speak more freely with like the storytelling or life experience stuff that I share, but if I'm doing a camera review video with lots of details and specs and easily confused components and numbers delivered in a short amount of time, then I definitely use a script. It is good for you, the filmmaker, it's good for the viewer, and although you may not realize it, 90% of the videos you see on the internet are pre-scripted, along with everything you see on TV. Okay, here, what is next? Ah, oh, lighting. Yes, yes. Use good lighting. Lighting is more important than your camera body, your lens, your mic, or pretty much anything else. Lighting will not only make your videos look more professional, it will literally make you look better. Soft yet bright diffused lighting does wonders for your skin, which is also good for your on-camera confidence. You'll most often hear that the best lighting comes from facing a big sunny window. And yes, it's undeniable that that glow of diffused sunlight is unbeatable and it's free. But due to its inconsistency and your lack of control over the shot, you will rarely see this in a professional video setting. You could have your talking headshot perfectly set up and exposed in front of a window and then the clouds roll in and your face is suddenly hit with a stormy color cast and the whole thing is underexposed. And then a minute later, the sun comes out even brighter than before with a rainbow, changing everything again. This may sound a little dramatic, but I live in Florida and this actually does happen daily. In addition, once you find that perfect window, you're stuck with whatever is behind you as your background. So if the goal is a professional looking video, then studio lighting is where it's at. Studio lights are a bit of an investment, but they're also much cheaper these days and can be as low as a few hundred bucks, which is well worth it for the guaranteed look of even consistent lighting. When choosing lights, it's best to go for well diffused lights that are also daylight balanced. You'll see this expressed as color temperature falling between the 5500 and 5600 Kelvin range. And to light both sides of your face evenly, you will need at least two studio lights. Mine are right here. Okay, not gonna move them. 
For the most part, I just use these two soft boxes. I've had them for years and they are holding up so, so well. I drag them all over the house to get amazing shots, like no matter where I'm sitting, which is really, really fun. I'll include a link to these below as well as a few other studio lighting options. Create background blur. Ah, the coveted background blur. This is definitely a thing that will make your video look a bit more professional. It's also known as using a shallow depth of field and whether or not you're actually able to get that blurry background depends on a few factors. First, you'll need to get into the manual video settings on your camera, which might sound scary at first, but using manual settings is a must for capturing professional videos and it's really not that hard to learn. I recommend watching this video here for some clarity on video settings in general. This demo is on the Canon M50, but the process is similar on many Canon cameras. And even if you aren't using a Canon camera, the same principle for settings applies across the board in aligning the frame rate, shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. So the key to that background blur is setting your camera at the largest aperture that the lens offers. And note that large apertures and large numbers are actually the opposite. So you actually want to go for the smallest number available, think 1.8, 2.2, and you want to stay away from that f16. Many kit lenses that come with the camera do not have super large apertures, so investing in a better lens is the best way to really obtain this effect. But still, even if your lens only offers like a 4.5, be sure to set it to that, not f22. If your lens does have a super large aperture like these Sigma lenses that I use, which offer a delicious f1.4, then you can even stop them down a bit so the focus isn't too shallow and the image is even sharper. Another factor that will help to blur the background is putting some distance between you and your background. So it's like camera, you, background. <laughs> Not camera, you, background. Don't stand right in front of a wall or a hedge. That's something I would stand in front of. Also, opting for a slightly longer lens will support this effect. So you can move the camera back and then zoom in a bit. Although, zooming in will reduce your largest available aperture. So you just need to experiment and see what works. But try all of those tricks and do what you can to get that background blur. And because I know you're curious, I am currently using Sigma's 30mm f1.4 lens with the aperture set at 2.8. And if you want to learn more about that amazing lens and its counterparts, then you can see lots of demo footage and discussion in this video here. Nail your white balance. White balance is something that is so often overlooked and I think it's because many of us video creators are like right-brained artists and then white balance is straight up science so we just avoid it. And it's also because our cameras offer that nice auto white balance setting so a lot of us just kind of go, oh, okay, I will go with that. And that is definitely what I did for many years. And I still do it sometimes if I'm just vlogging and I don't really have the opportunity to go in and mess with white balance, it works but it's not the best. But if you really wanna make your videos look more professional, you've gotta take a moment to go into the white balance setting on your camera and adjust it manually to be sure that the white balance selection in Kelvin temperature matches that of your main light source. Now, one level past using the auto white balance setting is to use one of these selections, setting it to daylight on a sunny day or under daylight balanced studio lights as we talked about, or setting it to shade if you're outside or tungsten if you're using regular household light bulbs. But in reality, even these settings are just approximate matches to your actual color temperature. So here is the quick and easy way to set white balance using a white balance card, which you can buy for about 10 to $30, or you can use a simple piece of white paper if you don't have the card. First, you want to set up your shot, everything, camera settings, lights entirely, and then put a white piece of paper right where your light source is going to fall on the subject. So right in front of your face and take a photo. And again, I will demo this on the Canon M50, but it's probably not too hard to figure out on those other cameras. So you go into menu, custom white balance, the photo will appear and then you can choose set. Then you will go back over to your white balance settings and choose custom. Your camera will then use the information set from that photo to determine your white balance. And as long as the colors look good, not too yellow, not too blue, then you've probably done it correctly and it's likely your most accurate choice. Although white balance is a very fluid thing, I feel like it's never perfect, but I'm gonna show you a little bit later on how to further tweak it in post. Shoot just a bit wider than you think you should. So let's talk about camera placement. I think the tendency is often to use a wide angle lens and then sit right up at the camera with the camera aiming down. And many YouTubers do this. The look actually sort of stems from how original webcams would look when we first started filming ourselves on webcams. 
which I never did, but I definitely do utilize the downward angle because it is flattering and it's just an easier way to make YouTube videos. However, it's not the most professional. However, I'm not always trying to be professional in YouTube videos, but it is a good thing to know that you just don't want to be too close. Conversely, the worst thing you could do is to be talking down into the camera. So you don't want it to be below eye level either. I think less tech oriented older people tend to do this. Like my dad is always FaceTiming me, like looking down into the camera. I'm like, dad, why are you doing that? But overall, the most professional look is going to be a slightly wider shot. So even in this sort of office environment, scooting back is going to give off a slightly more professional feel. Maybe if I were to wear pants, that would be helpful. Or if you can pull up a standing shot, that is even better because a lot of times that isn't done quite as often because you do need more space in a room. You need to back the camera pretty far up and you also need to wear pants. <laughs> so you definitely need to be presentable from head to toe. And I say this because yes, I usually don't change out of shorts or whatever to make my videos, even if I do wear a nice top. So the professional head to toe is like, look, this is really me and I am really professional. Although this video is not about looking professional, it's about making the shot look professional, but still, of course, dressing professionally helps. <laughs> Don't forget set design. So now that we have the light set and the camera set, we need to talk about the actual set. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but it should be carefully considered before you sit down to film. You'll want to look for a room big enough to place your tripod at a distance that works well with your lens, and you'll want to choose a background that aligns with your video's theme but also looks nice and somewhat minimal. In most home settings, living spaces can be tweaked into temporary professional sets by following these two steps. First, cut out all of the clutter. I cannot even tell you how minimalistic something might feel in a home, and then once you get it on camera, it suddenly looks so cluttered. It's like the camera amplifies everything. So cut out more stuff than you think. Look for tiny cords dangling down or off-centered arrangements, and just get rid of that pen or tissue box or coffee mug, unless it's an aesthetically pleasing coffee mug and it's part of your brand. Then you can consider keeping it, but only after you clear out everything first. Then, only add back in what is truly going to add value to your shot, whether it means something or it's just purely there for aesthetics. Here in my home office, I enjoy a balance of cool production things, shiny things in general because they just look good on camera, and then plants. I love my plants. And also, don't be afraid to move random items around the home into your shot simply for the video. I can't even tell you how many times I've awkwardly placed a household object in a different place just for the sake of a temporary set design. Like the time this plant awkwardly lived on the shelf for an hour while I filmed this baby monitor commercial. Or the time I got this hanging plant into my shot by using a giant rubber band to extend it low enough so the ivy could sort of cascade down because it was much longer at the time. I need to do that again. It was beautiful and it was definitely worth it. Or you can really open up your set design options if you go all out and try a green screen shot or two or three. Actually, it's just one shot. And once you master this shooting style, the sky's the limit. Literally. Okay, maybe green screens are a little bit cheesy, but they can definitely be used tastefully in marketing videos, or maybe just to film something simple without having to worry about designing your own background. Green screens themselves aren't as expensive as you think, and you can get entire green screen kits with all of the lights included for just a few hundred bucks. It's also not nearly as complicated as you might think. It sounds scary at first, but once you go through the process of learning from like a few YouTube videos how to set up the green screen and light the green screen, I'm confident that you'll be able to get through it. And I know this because this is actually the very first green screen shot setup that I've ever done. I was filming an orthodontist commercial as on-camera talent, and I've shot in front of a green screen before, but I've never been the one to actually set it up. I know it's probably not perfect, but I'm confident that if you do what I did, just kind of learn from YouTube videos on how to set it up, then you'll be able to set up a shot that is good enough and probably a lot more professional than what you might have as a natural backdrop in your home. Now, I got all of the backgrounds that you've seen so far from Story blocks. Storyblocks is a stock video library with over 1 million professional looking assets, including video clips, animated backgrounds, textures, titles, and more. It's a fantastic tool for video producers to turn to when they can't quite get the shot they need, or maybe they just don't have the time or budget to get the shot they need, or maybe they never even thought of going to get the shot they need. They just saw it later on in Storyblocks and thought, hey, that is really gonna spice up my video. Storyblocks offers completely affordable subscriptions that scale to meet your needs, so anytime you need a video production asset, you simply scroll, select, click, 
and download. Storyblocks is also a fantastic resource for obtaining exactly what you need for my next tip, which is use B-roll. B-roll is not only extremely helpful in bringing your video together in a professional way, it greatly benefits your viewer by adding additional visual variety and even clarity to what you're talking about. B-roll could be shots of things, scenes, people, written text, animations, or anything really. In the case of my videos, I often use demo footage from the camera or gimbal or lens that I'm talking about, and this not only gives the viewer something nice to watch, it really shows them what that piece of gear can do. You might also use B-roll to show an item in a more clear way as you're talking about it, rather than just holding it up to the camera. Or you might demonstrate larger concepts as you're talking about them, like life being so hectic these days and the need to just relax and connect with good friends. And the best part about B-roll for you, the editor, is that it's super useful to use to cover any edit points in your A-roll, which is the part where you're sitting there talking, so as long as the audio still flows, no one has to know that you started and stopped and then started talking again because you've got that nice B-roll clip on top of it. This little dance between A-roll and B-roll is typically what plays out in all sorts of professionally produced videos, and it's exactly what makes scripted videos work. Just pay attention next time you're watching TV commercials. There'll be someone talking, and then they'll show the thing that they're talking about, and it just kind of goes back and forth between those two things. B-roll also gives your viewer a break from watching you talk to the camera, which will overall keep them more visually stimulated and engaged in the video longer. It's such a win-win. Okay, sounds great. So how do you get that B-roll? Well, if you're talking about a certain product that you have on hand, it's smart to film it separately and use that as a B-roll clip that you can edit into your video later. Or you can just go out into the world and film the things that you want to appear in your video as B-roll. And if you script your video, then you can even plan ahead and go and film the clips that you're going to need before you ever get your A-roll. But be warned, getting beautiful B-roll shots is a whole different style of videography that is definitely gonna take some practice and some patience and some additional gear before you master it. Also, getting all of the B-roll clips that you need to demonstrate what you're talking about might be completely impossible or expensive or incredibly time consuming, which is why grabbing stock footage again from Storyblocks is a smart and professional way to go, and it's definitely how the pros do it. Storyblocks has just about every scenario of B-roll that you can possibly imagine. Animals, places, tech, macro shots, drone shots, time lapses, and all the other things that you might have time or equipment or expertise to go out and shoot yourself. So definitely check my link in the video description below to learn more about Storyblocks and imagine for yourself how their amazing library of content can really help to make your videos look more professional. Capture clear audio, because audio is important, but it does not have to be complicated. The point is for your viewer to clearly hear your message without being distracted by the audio, because bad audio is distracting. But it's not just wind and external noises that cause bad audio. If you're sitting in a quiet room but the mic is way too far away from your mouth, then your viewer will hear all the emptiness of the room in a very annoying and unprofessional sort of way. So to avoid this, you've got to plug an external mic into your camera. If you're planning to be very close to the camera, you could opt for a shotgun mic, which looks like this and just goes right on top of the camera. Or if you're going all out with the studio setup, then you can extend a mic above your head on what's called a boom stand. See that Storybox clip? But because I don't have a boom stand or a boom mic operator for my videos, my personal favorite to use is a wireless mic, specifically the Rode Wireless Go. So the receiver plugs into your camera, then the transmitter is the mic, so you can clip it on directly or run a tiny lav mic from it and attach it to your shirt. It even comes in both black and white so you can match it to your attire. Here's the video I recently did to review the new white model, where I did an entire skit in my wedding gown as a tribute to this mic simply because I love it so much. It's just so simple and works so well to provide the clear audio I need for a more professional video. Consider a color correction and a color grade. But wait, we already did that white balance thing so now it's good, right? Yes, it's good. Unless it's not, then there are ways to fix it in post. I saved this for very last because if you're trying to make a professional looking video, you never want to aim to fix something in post, you always want to aim to shoot it correctly in the beginning. So if your white balance looks funky and the whites don't exactly look white, although everything is correctly exposed, then in Final Cut, you can select this guy right here and hit Balance Color. This applies an auto white balance, but since we don't trust anything that says auto, you can then go up to this window here to actually override it with a custom white balance. You will get this handy dropper that you can then take into the shot to select something which is naturally white, like if you use that white balance card. Select that and then your best white balance should be set. 
And if you're not using Final Cut Pro, then simply search for how to set custom white balance in your type of software. Then, assuming your exposure is correct and everything looks good from there, you might consider going just a little bit more pro with a further color grade. This is the really fun stuff. So a popular film look is the classic teal and orange that really makes shadows moody and skin tones pop. Or there are lots of things you can do with matte looks, high contrast looks, and I'm also a big fan of general skin brightening looks. Now, color grading is an entire science itself, and every type of software makes you do it a little bit differently. So depending on your level of interest, it might be something worth studying and worth mastering. But if you'd like a quick and easy way to add an awesome color grade without learning all of the details, then I highly recommend experimenting with something called LUTs. LUTs are basically video presets or filters for color that are super easy to apply and are definitely a secret weapon to help make your videos look much more professional. LUTs are available in many different places, but I do have a few LUT pack offerings that I created that you can check out at amy.tv slash shop. I'll also link below to a free LUT download that you can try out as well. And I'd love for you to leave me a comment and let me know what you think of the fresh new look your footage has with these LUTs applied. Use music correctly. Okay, I know, music is art in itself and it's used to convey feeling and there should be no correct or incorrect usage of it because it's an expression. And yes, all of this is true, but there are two main things to understand about the usage of music in a video that is meant to be more professional than your average vlog. First, if you plan to share this video anywhere outside of your own home, then you've got to use music that is legal to use. So copyright free music, stock music, or music that you are licensed to use. You can grab something generic from the YouTube audio library, but chances are people have heard that track many times before and probably associate it with something else entirely. Yeah. So for a more unique track, there are lots of awesome music libraries that you can join. Personally, I love the variety in Epidemic Sound. I can just listen to it all day. They have so much cool music that you can use in your videos and you can start a free trial with them using the link that I have shared below. The other important thing to understand about music is that it cannot compete with the audio levels from your A-roll. So if you're using background music, then you have to lower the level of the music so it's actually in the background. Not lowering the level of the music is a huge amateur mistake and will likely lead the viewer away from your video before too long because it will be hard for them to focus on what you're actually saying. So to lower the volume here in Final Cut Pro, you just grab this line and bring it down. You want the volume of the person talking to sound appropriate, but the background music to sound soft behind it. Or if you do want the music to pop, you can just use it for things like graphic intros or along with the titles as I've done in this video, and then fade it back out when the speaking part comes back in. Add titles, graphics, and branding. Nothing says professional business like a professional logo flying around on your screen somewhere at some point. You can use branding in your intro, outro, or in your watermark to prevent copyright infringement. Also titles are a great spicer upper as well and can be used to further clarify or organize a video as I have done today. There are many ways to add titles. The easiest way is probably by exploring the options in your editing software. Although I do recommend using these adjustments to make alterations to the font or overall style of things rather than sticking to the generic presets. Because we've all seen this before. You can also install independently created plugins available all over the internet or create your own fancy things in After Effects. You can even use the After Effects templates available in Storyblocks to really animate your messaging. So again, check out my Storyblocks links below for yet another way to spice up your production. So there you have it, 11 essential ways to make your videos look more professional. Have you been doing all of these things or did one tip really stand out as something you can't wait to try? Is there anything you'd like for me to elaborate on in future videos? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the very next video. Bye.